Next in my great movie series is the first documentary I've done. It's by one of the great documentarians ever, one of the most influential at least, it's Errol Morris. And his second film called Vernon, Florida is an amazing documentary, very well edited and put together. We're gonna take a look at what it is and what it means and why you might wanna watch it. Coming up next. <laughs> All right, so Vernon, Florida is the second feature by Errol Morris. He made Gates of Heaven on a shoestring budget. He made this movie, similarly, on a shoestring budget. He went down to Florida in the late 1970s and interviewed a town of people. The story goes that this town had people who were amputating limbs in order to get insurance claims. This is why Errol Morris was drawn to the town. But it ends up that the movie he made is very different and is not about that at all. In fact, it's more of a portrait of several people in the town. And of course, given the title of this movie, Movie, it's trying to be about a specific town and specific place. The movie really consists of just interviews with people stitched together, and there's no obvious through thread or plot or hook in this movie. You listen to one person talk, then another person talk about something different, then another person talk about something different. Morris interviews one cranky old man, another who's an Elmer Fudd like hunter, another old man who's just goofy as all get out and handles muskrats by their tails, and in typical Morris fashion, he finds the weird weirdest, quirkiest, most interesting people who tell funny stories. So you can watch this movie and say, hey Morris, what in the world is this movie about? As a lot of movie raiders on the internet have. That's what this video is for though, it's going to help you understand this movie. I think it would help to understand the background of this movie. At least I'm guessing what the background is. In American cinema, there are tons and tons of movies, particularly by 1981 when this movie was released, about big American cities, particularly Los Angeles and New York City. As a small town Midwest dude, I am very well familiar with the fact that Hollywood doesn't make a lot of movies about the big wide open spaces of America except for westerns. Not a lot of movies about middle America. There are thousands and thousands of great places in the middle of the United States, but largely Hollywood has ignored us. So what you get a picture of in Vernon, Florida is a small town in the south, obviously Florida, but I find that the people in this movie are very familiar to me where I've lived in the middle of the United States. I'm listening to a lot of the characters in this movie and saying to myself, I know that man, I've heard that man talk, I've heard that kind of storyteller before. Now this here is a gopher. He's not a turtle. He's harmless. He won't bite you. I don't know just how come him to be way down in here. He don't like this kind of land here. He's a high, dry, sandy land for him, and he'll dig his den to be as far as 20 feet deep sometimes. Another thing going on in the background of this movie is that the American South has been badly stereotyped in American culture, particularly since, say, the 1960s. You got a lot of hicks and rednecks and inbred mouth breathers in American cinema representing the southern United States. And the worst offender of all is the movie Deliverance, a movie that involves a lot of vile, perverse, inbred stuff done by idiot rednecks. Now let's you just drop them pants. Drop? Just take them right off. I mean, what's this all about? Don't say anything, just do it. While we Southern and Middle Americans haven't ever lived deliverance down, it's still an ongoing joke in American culture for some reason. So I think when Errol Morris makes Vernon, Florida, he's got the dumb Southern stuff going on. And you know, he had TV shows like Dukes of Hazard and the Smokey and the Bandit movies portraying Southern life as kind of dumbish. And then you had a lot of movies about big cities. Well, in Vernon, Florida, you got a picture of a small town, people who are almost never featured in cinema or documentaries, certainly. And what does Morris find here? Here's one of the through three in this film that each one of these people are concerned with reality with truth with knowing who they are and why they exist basically everybody in this movie is a would-be little philosopher and I mean that in a complimentary sort of way now whether the documentary is true or false doesn't matter what it's depicting is that these people in the small town are thinking about God reality and nature they're thinking about whether chance or free will is dominating their lives they're thinking about why life is so odd and, uh, but who knows? You don't know God's plan. Uh, uh, even uh, Jesus Christ didn't know, you know. He's, it says right in the Bible that no man knows that uh, can find out the answer to that, you know, when the end of the world is. 
And so you get a portrait of this town where you've got little philosophers, little poets, little naturalists running around. They look like ordinary sort of dumb southern people, but in fact, they're really sort of interesting and intelligent. And the scene that tipped me off in this movie, when you go watch it, pay very close attention, is when Morris films a sermon being preached at a Christian church. The pastor gives a really long narration about the word therefore as it appears in the book of Acts within the Bible. And it's a very funny sermon. I actually had to laugh at it because it kind of is a parody of itself. But at the same time, this sermon is advocating for deep learning. Pastor goes on and on about how he noticed this word therefore repeated in the book and how he looked up the word therefore and had all kinds of meanings. But then he goes to the Greek translation for the word and finds out it has even more meanings than he imagined. And then he goes on and tries to apply all the meanings to the word therefore to his own life. And it's funny and profound at the same time. And uh... I began to think about it because I remembered somewhere back yonder when I was in school that an English teacher taught me something about the meaning of words. And this word, therefore, had a specific meaning. And I think, well, if Paul is using this word so many times, there must be a reason for it. So immediately I went to Webster's Dictionary and I began to look up what the word therefore was all about. Well, this pastor is advocating for deep learning, noticing, pondering, thinking, researching, really trying to figure out what things mean. And I think that is the idea in not just this Morris documentary, but in every Ariel Morris documentary. Every word, literally every word, even throwaway words, matter. And the words that people use, even though they're unconscious of all the powerful possible meanings of those words, you, the viewer, are supposed to notice all the rich meanings and see what the people are saying, even though they themselves aren't aware of their own profundities. Anyway, this movie gets me really excited because it has sort of an arc to it where as it goes, it gets sort of more and more philosophical, maybe more and more theological. And this Elmer Fuddish hunter who is a goofy turkey hunter trying to stalk turkeys and hunt them in the Florida sticks, he's at once a ham for the camera, an interesting storyteller, an interesting personality on film. Of course, that's one of Morris's charms is that he finds people who work really well in front of the camera but are not professionals. Anyway, this hunter goes on and on in search of the turkeys and by the end great final scene he's in a boat and he sees dozens of turkeys in a tree it's a great moment of wonder and mystery for not just this hunter but for you because why is nature so cruel and yet why does it provide such a bounty that's the kind of question that these people are asking even though they may not know they're asking that question and this movie really argues even if morris intended it or not for local rule, for localism, period. I mean, the kind of thing where local knowledge is all important. I mean, these people in Vernon, Florida, they know their area better than anybody. And so they ought to be able to determine what goes on in their particular place. That's kind of what localism is. The movie's also showing the quirky, goofy, violent, funny, bizarre aspects of American culture, as you would expect from an Errol Morris movie. You know, his first movie was about people creating pet cemeteries in California, and it's the same thing going on there. But I find that Vernon, Florida is a little bit more honoring of the people being interviewed. Maybe because it's trying to train the viewer, you, to look very carefully at everything that goes on in a work of art, in a movie in particular. And listen to every word that somebody says. It's one of the things that Morris really advocates for is listening very carefully. I like this movie because I like backwater, backwoods America. And if you want a picture of America, don't just watch movies about New York City. Watch movies like Vernon, Florida to get some of the flavor of what life might be kind of like here in the United States. Please subscribe to my channel. Leave me any comment. What are your questions about this movie? Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.